Hey folks, it's uh, George again, back here with another video from New Spirituality. That's K-N-E-W, New, meaning that the things I'm sharing here are uh, things that you know deep down within. And uh, it may seem like new material, but in, in a way it's, 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 some, it's what you already know. So, yeah, I, last time I shared um, a lot about the I Ching and Bagua uh, and its relationship to a geometry and how that relates to the, some of the mathematics of 369 that I've been working on. And, um, you know, I was so excited after that last video because I saw some patterns even while I was doing the video um, that led me to some new discoveries just within the past few days. So I got back to the drawing board and uh, I'm gonna share a, a lot of other information associated to what we were talking about. So we're gonna do like what we did last time. Um, you know, I've got the, uh, the lovahedron over here, the shapes of the lovahedron, which were really useful last time. And, um, you know, I've got, again, you know, all the little props that will be used as well. And I'll be sharing the screen. And this time we'll, we'll spend a good amount of time doing stuff with the screen because we're gonna put things together in a way uh, that is um, pretty unique in sacred geometry. I mean, it, it's all in there. Um, but if you're into sacred geometry or if you're just getting into it, this is gonna be jam packed with uh, information and you're gonna see a lot of different shapes, uh, utilized in different ways. So uh, it could definitely be an expansive uh, video to watch if you're getting into sacred geometry. I'm gonna cover a lot of the basics too. So, you know, let's move through some of these slides. I've got quite a few to go through. I hope it doesn't go as long as last time. Um, but at the end, there will be another great ending because um, I'm gonna bring all this stuff to life, literally. I'm gonna bring this right into what it means for our biology and uh and our cells and that's coming up at the end because this all led right to that direction so um here let's take a look at the screen okay share that one so okay this is where uh we started off last time and we're really not going to spend a lot of time here i'm just kind of doing a quick synopsis and overview of where we left off um, you know, I talked more about the numbers of the trigrams and how that's um, a tetrahedrons that are being formed based on the octahedron that was at the middle of this to create that star tetrahedron that you see in the middle. So in the last video, you saw me take these seven uh, star tetrahedrons and bring them together and join them. This one goes in the middle. But you have six other ones, the six red and the six blue ones here, which can be any color. Um, you know, I discovered something really neat in how these six here relate to the trigrams, just these six tetrahedrons to make this form. And I'm going to talk about that towards the end of the video. Um, so when we link these all together and these fit over top of these octahedrons that are in here, they're already linked to them. I just broke them apart this way. It creates that cube octahedron in the middle. And I'm not gonna focus as much on the numbers in this video because they, they all add up to nine, like I said, and they're all in a specific spot for particular reasons uh, in regards to the numerics. Watch the other video. It's all in the beginning of that video, pretty much where I described that. So when we linked all those together, you know, it looked like that. We had a little rosette of numbers and all the numbers are mixed in the middle. But then when we got to this shape, when I took out the octahedrons, we could see this uh, kind of unusual looking star shape pattern in the middle, which is made up of the six uh, star tetrahedrons around the one star tetrahedron that was in the middle. So, that is, uh, when we did that, I, I noticed that I saw all the red numbers up on the top and all the blue numbers were down at the bottom. 
And that rekindled a memory of mine that when uh, a few years ago, I was looking at the double tourist field and Seam Harriman's work on that, and that double tourist fit right over top of that. So after I did the video, I sat with that image because it was an unusual shape. I actually discovered that it's actually the inner workings of what a, um, of the uh, octahedron shape. And you'll see how that plays into this in the, in the video in just a moment. So after I did the video a few days later, I uh, decided to just clean up that image, take out all the numbers, and just do a really nice clean representation of it with nice straight lines and not having all the tetrahedrons that are joined together. Now the reason we joined those tetrahedrons together before is to show that that was a three-dimensional um, shape like this, right? An eight-sided star shape that we joined and fit together uh, to make it three-dimensional. Now I pretty much just made it looking like a flat 2D image. And when you lay out the lines like this while I was constructing this, I was just amazed because remember, this fits perfectly in the 19 circles of the flower of life. But every single point for that joining of the tetrahedrons, the star tetrahedrons in that way, they all go over, link to every single nodal point with on the flower of life design. Nothing is uh, left out. Like we're not pulling um, anything out of it, you know, to say here's a star tetrahedron and this is what it looks like. It's all joined together and every little nodal point in the flower of life, which is now three dimensionally represented, has those intersecting points. So that's just a really neat connectivity between all those points. And this shape, which I haven't really seen, I don't think I've seen it illustrated, um, are joined together in this way. So if you're new to sacred geometry, if you've been around for a while, let me know what you've seen. Um, and if you're new to it, this is definitely a form you want to play around with. So what I did next um, is I like to get a form like this, which the base form was this red one they were looking at. And then you, you can ratchet it like 15 or 30 degrees. And when you do that, you'll uh, get a whole new looking pattern there. So right now I just turn that shape, which is a beautiful design, new design. You know, I haven't seen this one represented this way, but it's got 12 points, main points coming around here. So I ratcheted that once. And once you get ratcheting things and you're like, new patterns can be emerging. And I knew if I did it one more time with this image, that that would bring me up to uh, a 24 pointed design here. Now remember the flower of life is still in there and we're used to just seeing it, you know, with those concentric circles going around. We don't ever really see it ratcheted once or ratcheted now to get the 24 points. And um, what I did next, so I'm giving you like a real in-depth behind the scenes of like how these forms work within me and kind of the process that I go through in working with them to kind of reveal new patterns and new shapes that are already in there, um, but are new to me because I haven't seen them in other places represented like this. So this is now represented, uh, ratcheted twice over. Um, so that I believe these are like 15 uh, degree increments between each of these. And you have the 24 points all the way around. And now I've separated what the flower of life looks like when it's ro rotated like that and the inner structure of all the lines. So right now we have both the, uh, the spherical on the right. Um, I think it's your right on the screen. And uh, on the left over here, we've got the um, straight line. So we've got these two polarities here, right? Between the circular form and we've got this straight line version over here. So whenever I see that, and um, when you brought the 24 in, it got me thinking about all the work that I've done with uh, the Fibonacci spiral, the golden spiral. You know, Fibonacci is our best representation, which is a sequence that has a repeating code that um, 
Jane Math Magics talks about this code. It's one of the codes he cracked or discovered along the way in his sacred geometry research that if you count it around here, that code um, would add up to 24. So if you went around in the Fibonacci sequence, one plus one, well, that equals two, and two plus one, that would equal three, two plus three would be five, five plus three would be eight. And if you went all the way around it and then you added the cross numbers, it would go around 24 times, it would start to repeat itself as you went around again. And that would just go on and on and on. And the Fibonacci spiral can go on endlessly and endlessly and endlessly, deep rooted pattern in nature. In fact, outside today, uh, a few days ago, you know, I found just this little plant stem that was out right in the driveway. And it's got this beautiful uh, spiral going to it through it. Uh, just, uh, I just pondered and was amazed by, you know, here's nature's pattern of the spiral right here in this little plant stem that just blew up, you know, in front of my vehicle. So I was like, okay, now it's time to spiralize this, you know, bring the spiral in. Where is the spiral fitting in? So I believe that's my next slide coming up. Yep. So here's a little bit more behind the scenes. You know, I take the Fibonacci spiral that you see here on the right, uh, you know, within the boxes, this is how it works. One and one, this is the two, you got the three box, the four, the five, uh, five, you know, eight, and then, uh, you know, so on and so forth up to the next one, uh, 13. So, you know, then I was like, I'll turn these on their side and, you know, create this neat little image design up here. And now I was like, okay, well, I'll put this over top of the flower of life. You could see I found that there was one, R, one circle within the middle here that like the spiral really liked to hug as it went into the center and they all kind of went around that spot. So uh, I pulled those out and started to overlap them on the 24 points that I had already. So underneath this, it's very faint and yellow, is that 24 pointed star. And now I've got this vortex uh, energy here going on, you know, the spiraling motion, 24 points, all connecting with Fibonacci numbers. Uh, and it's, we've got one here that's going uh, the counterclockwise, one going clockwise. So when I put these two together, as you see in the center, and this is a really phenomenal image to look at, and I'll be posting some of these like in my blog and writing about them as well, and just putting them on Facebook so people can really just have some time to sit with the image and just, you know, be with it. Because if you spend some time with this one, you'll see that it's radiating lines of light that aren't there in, you know, in the drawing, but there's these streams of light coming out of it that, uh, you know, I didn't draw in there. So it's one of those little optical illusion things, but sacred geometry is the language of light. It's like an atomic art. And, uh, you know, cause it connects to all those different levels from the smallest to the largest. So when you're looking at this image, I, I don't know if you checked out those Nassim Harriman videos that I mentioned when he's talking about the double torus and they were in links in my last video, I put some in the, the comments at the bottom, uh, the description. So if you were looking kind of down at the top of the double torus with the plus side, that would be like you're looking down this little red vortex coming up and around and then back down into the center. Same thing with the blue one here on the side, that's now on below and that's being pulled on up into the center. So this is a kind of a, a simple representation of the spiraling energy superimposed over top of one another. And then I was like, well, you know, I can easily see this as the yin yang symbol because I've been working with the I Ching and I wanted to see what happens if we turn that symbol into that energy. How does that fit? Because Nassim was talking about the yin yang symbol in there. So I worked with 
taking the red spiral lines in blue and having them. So I have 12 and the other 12 are the matching numbers in the Fibonacci sequence on the other side. So those counter numbers, as you go around and add them up, everything adds up to nine. I don't know why that is, but it's always coming back to nine in the mathematics I did in Fibonacci sequence. It's all adding up to nine. So these counterpoints of the red and connecting to the blue, those polarities again, it's the same way that I did the I Ching numbers in the previous video. They're meeting up to add up to number nine. So we've got five red, five blue, and there's the yin yang symbol, right? There it is, there's the red and there's the blue. And that one is rotating the counterclockwise way. And this one is the clockwise way. There it is there and there it is there. So then, you know, we just start joining things together and I take those two cool designs and bring them into the middle. And then what do we have? We have the red and the blue on top. So it's very similar. I'll just bring that, I mean, it is, you know, what we're looking at here uh with this other double torus image with the red up on the top here and the blue now the only difference there you know because i'm looking we're looking at this now as if we're looking down at it right this is looking from the side and you have that but it just shows that there's this uh parallel uh, polarities that are happening when we work with these numbers in this way and with these shapes and these colors so um okay just kind of taking you through a kind of quick exploration of the journey i went on with these shapes and, and hopefully you'll just find these shapes really attractive to look at while you uh are listening to me talk about them and i i, I do have a lot of little props i'll be showing in just a bit so just stick stick with me because we're moving into the next phase of uh, the discovery. So I put on that previous shape, the one that I found at the octahedron, the one that had all the numbers around it previously. And I put that right into the middle of that shape to show you where it is. Remember, that's the flower of life points. Every point on this is a, is a point on the flower of life design. And now it's in the tetrahedral form, so it's not flat, it's three-dimensional. So you're looking at a three-dimensional spiraling uh, sphere, basically a torus energy, a, a torus shape. Um, and then I took that image and I brought it right into the center of the complete flower of life design. So I'm gonna, I have to zoom out quite a lot because I really started to expand the uh, how much space we have to use because it's going to get pretty big here in a second. So I took that one design that we whittled down to and put it right in the center. So the flower of life, which started out as the overall outside ring here, is now all contained within the smallest circle, the smallest sphere it, within the whole. And this is getting into what I've been talking about in some of my posts and what other researchers are talking about when they say it's a fractal holographic universe, meaning that the, the whole is contained within the smallest part. So this is going to show that. Now, the cool thing about this, what we're doing here is, you know, we've got it uh, spherical at this point. You know, we're not just going to do a flat design. So as we go through these next slides, uh, we're going to be adding to this. And now I'll get into showing you some of the lavahedron shapes. That it's a it's a spherical shape. So if you were to look at the center of that, it's a star tetrahedron. This one just collapsed. I'm not going to fix it, but we'll be using the lavahedron shape, which is this kind of odd-looking tetrahedron. We're going to basically be able to do the same build like I did previously, but I'm going to show you uh, some more shapes in that I can get out of the levahedron. And as we do that, we're going to add up how many actual spheres is the fruit of life in its full maxed out area. So the fruit of life, when you connect these outer uh, lines, that's where Metatron's cube and all five platonic solids are held within that. 
So when we go around, uh, we're going to be figuring out how many spheres, and this is going to be really cool and really crucial to add up. And I've always wondered, and I really didn't know until today, <laughs> you know, like a few hours ago until I worked through this, to find out how many spheres it is. And when we find out how many spheres, spheres it actually is, it's going to be really interesting. You're going to be really, it's really neat, neat to find out. Because um, it's going to relate to so many other things. Okay, so um, I just described that, but here it was. We, that was the base shape that I took originally. That's where it was in the flower of life. You know, it was really big at that point. So we just basically condensed it down to that small little size. And now this is when we'll get into the building of this, all right? So now I'm taking that shape now, which is like, whoops, I'm moving the wrong one. Let's unmove that. See, there's three below it and there's three on top. That's that shape, right? So that is uh, the seed of life shape. There's uh, one in the middle. It's the classic shape. I'm, I'm labeling these up here. We've got one in the center. We got six new, new spheres that are added to give you a total of seven for that seed of life, which some consider to be the first seven days of creation that they're talking, that, that biblically is being talked about with the first seven days of creation as these spheres of energy, each one of these represents a new day. So we have, let's move this one black out of here. Okay, I got it. So let's, uh, let me just show you off screen real quick. So just like I was talking about a little bit in the previous video, I was using these shapes, which were kind of the uh, latest version of the lavahedron shape with these holes in it. This is the same basic form. And it's uh, basically like an octahedron. It's eight-sided form, so it works just like the octahedrons. And we fit this together. I showed this the other day in the video. And now we have that um, octahedron, bigger octahedron shape. The tricky part that I'm not able to do here is that there's actually, you know, another sphere at the middle of this that, you know, with the materials I'm using, I can't do. But I can show that in these slides that, that there is one at the center because you have six around one. But when these three come together, they actually create the one in the middle anyway. So these three are you know, kind of like um, what I'm going to make an analogy to a little bit later on is like each one of these is like one, uh, one line of a trigram. So that's a trigram, another triangle. It's like one line of a trigram, one, two, three. And the other one is another. So you got six lines total for this shape that have come together to form and fuse. And that's going to be related to the I Ching. Uh, as we look into that in just a bit. So let's move back to the screen. There it is. And share. Okay, so I've just done some little, um, quick little drawings here. So this drawing in the middle doesn't look too chaotic, but it's got, you know, these vortex spheres now, which are like little mini uh, swirls of energy. Uh, Nassim Harriman often kind of makes a little joke. He's like, he says, it's the smoothie universe, you know, because every single one of these little points are like these little spinning black and white holes, you know, that are these little torus fields. And I'm going to be constructing with these shapes you know, the smoothie universe, uh, there's hundreds of little lines within this and we're gonna have thousands of lines in this when we're completely done. Um, and it's, it's just an abstraction of what's really there obviously, but it's really getting to close to what it might look like when all this energy is swirling around and all these colors. So here's the octahedron shape. It just fits right on there like so. 
And that's, uh, you know, I talked about the octahedron before. That was this shape here. Eight sides. And when you're looking at it like that, you're just seeing, you know, from one, one plane of it. Let's get that lined up for you. Just like that. So you don't see the lines that are behind it because you're only seeing the flat front, but the back is there. So when you, you know, when you see this image, you usually see it as just a regular uh, star, six pointed star in the middle, because you could see through this all the way to the back lines. But when you see it as solid on the front, then it just looks flat like this, like an eight sided dice or like this with this octahedron in the middle. So we've got that one. And now I did the same thing with this other one. I'll put that one on there because at the base of this in the center is what is already, it already has contained within it the cube octahedron shape within it. And that's coming up in just a second. I'll show you where that one is. But when you connect these lines, the cube octahedron is within that octahedron shape, it already exists within it. And the star tetrahedron is in there too, and that's what my next slide is gonna show. Might take a little bit, the, the computer, my little thing swirling around because there's so much information packed on this, it um, almost crashed, it crashed a few times today because these images are just so big. Uh, so much information on it. So here is now where the points would be when we build the star tetrahedron points off of the pre-existing little docking stations that I had mentioned previously. These little docking stations, how the star tetrahedrons kind of got to kind of just grow off those spots. So we've got a whole bunch of new spheres just added in. And the lovahedron shape, I'll show you what that looks like with this uh, prop here. Let's go back to stopping the share. Now I showed you this the other day, right? If you saw the video, if you didn't, this we'll, we'll be constructing this in just a moment too, but this was the big octahedron shape. It's got eight sides. It's just a bigger version of what I showed you. And it's like a transformer, you know? It's, um, I could take it apart and I'm gonna transform this right now into that star tetrahedron. Remember, if you saw the previous video, at the center of this, was a star tetrahedron in the middle. But because I don't have, uh, because with this new build, I'm building off of, uh, off of this shape right now, I'm not able to uh, put that little octahedron in the middle there because it's just gonna run into stuff. So I have to kind of revise. Those shapes are in there, but we've gotta build it in a different way. So just like these dock into the tops, these flat faces here, will they match up together like this? Just like, come on, there we go. Just like that. All right, so that's matched up like that. And if I turn it around this way, and I take one more of the same little shape because now I'm going to put that on top like that. Now I've got, you know, a, a kind of funky looking star tetrahedron, but it's a cube basically. If I turn it on its side, you'll see it's just a square. And, and a star tetrahedron is basically the inside of a square type of shape. But we take that square, you know, basically if you took like a six sided dice die and turned it up on its side, uh, like this view, you know, then you've got a star tetrahedron shape that spins its on its uh, top points like that. So if I spin this one around like so, you know, you've got the upper and lower points going around. I know it's an unusual form to look at because it doesn't have all those straight edges that we normally look at with the uh, 
star tetrahedron, uh, straight line view, and even the images I'm showing you on there. This is kind of like a mix between uh, straight lines and uh, a sphere. And that's what I really like about this lovahedron shape is that I'm able to kind of construct things in a way that kind of keeps a little bit of uh, both happening, the straight lines and the sphere. All right, so right now at the center of this, I don't have anything in there because I can't put anything in there. It's like, oh wow, it looks like it's uh, some sort of alligator all of a sudden, but um, you know, I can't put that other one that would be in the middle, although it does exist like in the geometry, they're all interlocked. So we're gonna be creating two forms, this is one of them. So this added, you know, eight new outer points. This is what you normally see when you look at a star. Here's a triangle point and down where my bottom hand is. That's one triangle and the other one is in the back here. One, two, and the third is over there. So it's upward pointing triangle and downward. And at the center, these are where the, uh, that's where the point is for the circle to come off of. So those are the points. This is the center circle here. So this is the egg of life because you see these spheres would be not interjoining anymore. They'd be clustered around one another. It's a really important shape, the egg of life. It represents the first eight cells within our bodies. It is the first eight cells in our bodies. This is how the formation starts to take place. It becomes a tetrahedron and then a, a star tetrahedron. And I've got some images that I'll show you in a bit about that. But when you normally look at these, remember you have that one point towards the center. And if you turn this around, you have one whoop, directly behind it, just like so. So that's the three dimension, dimensions we've got, you know, that we're seeing these in. And all those images of sacred geometry, flower of life and whatnot, uh, I hope they're just gonna start to pop off the page for you and, and bring them to life in your mind's eye. And when you look at a flat image of uh, a flower of life, you, you'll probably never see that image the same again after knowing that this is what, you know, it's looking like. So let's see, where are we at with the uh, sharing the screen? All right. Okay. So now we, just to show you where those center points are, let's put the little Merkaba body of light image back on here. And those are where those center points and there's the spheres that are coming off them. Remember there's the one directly behind it. So now all of a sudden you can kind of see, I didn't do the circles. I could bring, I could do that for you. Let me do that for you. I'll bring the, this flower of life image uh, you know, the whole spherical form here, go up to the top. So let's bring it to the front, front and center. Here it comes. Hopefully it won't freak out and crash. It could. Nope, there it is, right? So there you go. There, there's how it fits, right? So now there's the sphere. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight is on the back side, just like I was showing you. Three dimensions where we've got it in here. And it's way, way super complex because remember at the center of each of these already consists of hundreds of little lines. There's six, seven star tetrahedrons already joined together in the center of each of those. And that's the same pattern of even the big ones I showed you. And this whole giant thing is a big one. And it just that's, goes small and small and smaller and larger and larger and larger. It's completely connected, unified field, fractally expanding like this or contracting and with the spheres. And remember, you know, I completely forgot, I've got the spiral energy in here, the spirals going on in here now too with the Fibonacci spirals, which are making all of those, not just spherical or straight lines, you have spirals within each of those spheres and we could do those spirals at the bigger scale too. It's a smoothie universe. I know why I like smoothies so much now. So let's see, oh, I'm moving the wrong one. I could probably just go to the next one here. And that was the same shape as before. 
but we won't worry about that. We're gonna start over again, back at square one. So we'll do a little quick breather. Just do a count on the side. I know this is a lot of information. Some of these videos, if you are really into this and you, you might wanna watch a few times because um, there's a lot of info. If you start drawing the images, and like I mentioned, you know, if you can get some of those blocks like this, I put a link for where I got these in my other video, you can uh, start playing with them and see, it's really um, a lot of discovery awaits you and you can go further in this than um, where I've gone with it for sure. So we've got the one at the center. So far I'm doing a cumulative count because we got to restart from the beginning because I'm not able to uh, construct these forms because they'll be overlapping uh, the concentric circles. So we've got a total count right now of up to 15 total for that structure that I just showed you, 15, 15 spheres already. And now we're gonna build out from there the cube octahedron shape, which I placed right at the middle, which is now just fitting right over. We're gonna go back to the transformer here in a minute, the lavahedron transformer. Um, and we've got the, uh, each of these is the center of these spherical uh, balls right now. And there's also three more behind. So there's 12, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then on the back side, there's 10, 11, 12, and one at the center. So the cube octahedron, the vector equilibrium, that has one at the center and 12 around the outside, which is a very significant uh, numbers sequence, one at the center and 12 around. Uh, so we've got um, a couple things before I go to the lovahedron shape. If we put this star tetrahedron here in the middle like this, then we've just made the, uh, vector the uh, isotropic vector matrix and the 64 tetrahedron grid. Now, I've done it in a way where there's so many little tetrahedrons in here, it's, it's out of hand. That 64 tetrahedron grid is probably right down in the center here in each one of these little spheres at this point. But at this scale, this is what it looks like, okay? So we've got that one in there. And what really happens with this shape at this point is that we're gonna have all of these all together, you know, overlapping like this. So the, uh, the points, and this is where it's a little hard and took me a while to visualize because we're gonna build the octahedron shape in a moment. And these lines aren't matching up great, but that's okay. We know where the star tetrahedron line is. It comes up to right here. But also when I put that octahedron shape on there, see how it closed off? There's a hexagon now around the outside of this. Well, that's gonna be this sphere over here. And that's why the cube octahedron is called the cube octahedron because all it is is it's a cube and an octahedron, but you've truncated both those sides. You've taken off the octahedron side and you've taken off the cube side. So all you're left is with the first shape I had in the middle, which was the cube octahedron. When you have all together, it's the reverse of that, um, which is the, uh, I think it's the rhombic dodecahedron, I'm pretty sure. I have to look that up again. Uh, that would be the opposite of it. So let's move this one out here. Go back to the, oh, I'm moving off the, uh, oh, there's the cube octahedron. So, and I've left the two middle lines in the middle. They weren't grouped. But you, you get, hope you're getting the basic idea. Let's come out and I'll show you some of these in the, uh, with the props. Stop share. Okay. So here's the straight line version of the cube octahedron I was just showing you. Okay, you were looking at it kind of with that triangle towards you, the little triangle on the top, those three squares around it, and three triangles. Right at the center, 
it's got that center ball in the middle. And it's really, this is a super significant shape because it's got this dynamic tension that everything on the outside is all built with the same length inside. It's like one of the only shapes that I'm pretty sure that I'm aware of that does that with this sort of symmetry. So this is like within every structure at the, at the core. That's where, that's where the, uh, like if we were drawing this with the compass, you know, that's where the middle needle of the compass goes and that cube octahedron is all the way already in there. And from there, we're then going to build off of there, picture a, uh, off this square, Say, well, I'll picture off this square, an octahedron face coming off of that. Let's do that. I took this square of the octahedron. Basically, what you do is you go around and you just pop them in there like that. And I'll be able to turn this right into an octahedron if I did all six sides of those. And I'll show you on that in the lovahedron. And it's no different with the tetrahedron points here. You know, they'll fit right in there. And they'll also go off the top like that. But what you're looking at with the vector equilibrium um, with, with the 64 tetrahedron grid is that little bit doesn't go meet right at the top like there. Only a little bit sticks through the top like that. Most of the rest of that tetrahedron is on the inside. I know that's a little complicated and confusing, but that's why, you know, if you study these shapes and work with these images, you might, you'll, you'll start to pick up some of those little peculiarities. So let's go back to this lovahedron star tetrahedron shape that we did before. And now as we transform this, I'm gonna start taking it apart. And we did this one in the other video. You know, I took that out of the center. And now I flipped it out because these already have the octahedron bits on the outside that make it that, but if you just focus on these three, that's gonna be one face of the cube octahedron. That's one at the center. And then we're gonna take this little ring of six and we're gonna place that right around like so. This, this has really gotten a lot of use. I'm surprised this has been holding up so well as I take it apart and put it back together. Just like in the previous video, we got one in the center. We're building the ring of the cube octahedron. It already has these on here, which make it the octahedron. I'm not able to build both the octahedron and the cube octahedron with this together. But when you put it all together like that, actually, you know, I probably, I, I probably could build it. I'm just thinking about it now. But um, so there's an octahedron type face. The cube octahedron, if I were to take these off, I can remove that one. That's a little dicey. I don't think I'll do it. Uh, but if you take those off in the middle is the cube octahedron shape. And next video, I'll take this apart, take off these six points around the outside. So you could really see that as the uh, cube octahedron. All righty, screen share time. All right, so now we're moving on to another form, which is building off of the cube octahedron which I just showed you with the lovahedron shape. Next image is now that bigger octahedron shape, which was this. So we've just added those six points here, here, and here. And now this is what gave us all the shapes for the, uh, all the nodal points for the flower of life. And I didn't even really recognize when I was building this out, but I was like, huh, I wonder if I take those six star tetrahedrons that I showed you way back at the beginning of the video, which made this little shape here, the red one. Remember, that's at the middle, dancing around. That's at the middle of each one of these. But because it's um, holographic in nature, 
then all of a sudden I was like, well, let me take these tetra star tetrahedrons that I did. And I basically put that together and put it right back here in the middle. And then that fits in there just like that. So that same little small shape that is in each little circle, which was the flower of life in every little circle, which is the way it should be. The flower of life should be in every little circle. It should be in every little thing. Because remember I said, I don't know, maybe I mentioned uh, in my uh, blog post, you know, you cut a piece of DNA in half. Well, it's giving you the seed of life image. So the flower of life and the seed of life, all those images are all related. So it should be in everything. So that fits right back in there at this scale. And, you know, here's the uh, octahedron. Those are the tetrahedrons that would show up on it. And remember, just keep remembering now, we're looking at this as a three-dimensional design. Uh, it's got some volume and we're counting up. And I might've forgot to do that last time because when we're doing one in the center, we had the seed of life for the six, we had the egg of life, we had added another eight, so we we're up to 15. And then we got to the cube octahedron, which added the 12 around the one. Now this is kind of like, almost like a dividing line between those first six and eight, six and eight ones we have. The only thing they have now in common is the center. All the spheres are now overlapping, so I'm just breaking it apart so we can do a cumulative total, but they all share the same center, and each of those spheres are represented within this image. Some are just on top of one another three-dimensionally, so you don't actually know that there's another sphere back there, because when you look at it flat like this, you're only seeing the front hand without seeing the back one there. That's what it's like. So we've got up to total right now with the octahedron in the flower of life pattern here, 33. So essentially there's 32 um, spheres total being represented within this with one at the center. So everything's coming off that center point with 32 around it, which is another crucial number. I mean, it's adding up 32. Oh, okay, 32. So we're doing a binary sequence here, you know, eight, uh, you know, 16, 32. The 16 didn't show up in here, but from the eight here to the 32, you know, it's moving along. And this is just the way cells do their uh, replication process. And that's what I'm leading up to at the end. So another little thing that I did here, and uh, I could put this on the last image. I'm going to do it and see what happens. I think it might crash the machine though. So maybe I won't do it. Um, but if we're going to, now I'll go back to this one real quick. This is a, a design where I took the star tetrahedrons and it's gonna be a little bit of an unusual uh, build because I'm taking a star tetrahedron. Let me ungroup this so I can show you. Let's see if it does it. Okay, is there one of those there? Yes. The whole thing, I just want one. I tell you, it's really um, finicky using this. Okay, get over there. Oh, they're still grouped, hold on. Okay. Yeah, it's really, uh, you know, works with the, uh, the patients. Hopefully as a viewer, you'll have the patients to uh, sit through this little uh, dancing, screen. Okay, here we go. Let me get this. This is kind of a critical, uh, a crucial part of this. So we've got one star tetrahedron. And I really want to just show you where that is going to line up on here, because we're going to now build a star tetrahedron, a big one off of each of these. And it's very specific where the uh, nodal points are. So the center of that star tetrahedron is gonna line up right at the tip there of the octahedron shape. And my drawing is just a little off. 
but the top here should meet at the, whoops, still moving. Let's go back. Okay, the top here should meet here. These will meet over here. And now those are meeting off of this circle here. That's meeting off of that one there. And then this one's meeting up at the top here. So when we build this up and out in the next image, you'll see that uh, those are where this, those extra spheres are, uh, are, are coming from. They're originating from those nodal points. So that's what you're looking at in this one here, where you have six around the one in the center and one behind that. And I take this whole image, which I didn't do because this, this image has got too much information on it. It freezes up the screen. So I'm gonna go to that one. And I'm pretty sure, I wish I could go back and see that one. Just check this one more time. I wanna make sure I put that in the right spot. I think it's a little lower. Let's see. I'm pretty sure. Let's let's double check. Let's go over here and see. So we got this. I think I got this group. This too. Oh yeah, this is the way I set it up. I'm going to take both these. I'll bring them back to the other image. Group them. Uh, copy. And let's bring them back and put them on top there and see where they line up so we could see it on, on this version at least. Let's get rid of this one. Let's put that back down there. And we'll drop this in right over top of this. It should still be lined up. Might just take a second. There it is. Yeah, okay, that's right. Yeah, see that one met down here. The base of that triangle, that one meets here at the center of that one. These meet out to the outside of those. They go up to here. That's gonna be the center point of that sphere. So this tetrahedron right here is giving that sphere there and that one there. So when we come back over to the final giant version of this. I might take a second to get there because uh, it's a huge version, but we're at the octahedron state and we're gonna add on these tetrahedrons. Each of these tetrahedrons are um, consisting now of one, two, three, four little um, balls. Let's... Uh, show you what that looks like on the screen, without the screen share. So here's the three, and here is one that fits right in. I haven't shown you this shape yet, but this is what the counterpart to the lovahedron shape is for this one, okay? And it's different, it's, a, it's, a mod, it's the modified version of this, this is the same thing. This one fits with the other big version I've been using, but as I refined it a little bit more, this has actually got a uh, this chestahedron shape down in the middle, and those are what are poking through the top of each of these. It's a really fascinating shape, and but it, the same rules apply regardless of what form, even with just the regular straight line star tetrahedrons. But let me get back on track here because. Each of those top tetrahedrons are built off of one, two, three, and one of these that are gonna fit in like that. And we're gonna take eight of these. So there's gonna be four, you know, for each uh, of the eight sides that are like this. And now remember, we're gonna be attaching these onto this big shape, which is the octahedron. It's basically created the platform at this point to build off, because it's got eight sides, we can build off those star points off this and we can make a big star tetrahedron out of this. I only really have 
uh, you know, can do it with two pieces. So we'll make it just the top and the bottom. And you'll have to visualize as I spin it around here, that one would be facing up, this one would be down, this face coming around would be a flat facing up point, this one would be pointing down, and so on and so forth. And that would now be spinning around like this. So you've got an octahedron in there, and now we're gonna add these star tetrahedron points. So we now have built out to the complete fruit of life stage all the way from the center through every successive stage in there. I know some of you are, might be wondering like, well, where is the uh, tree of life? Well, I guess I can see it's right behind my head, but um, you know, the tree of life is another structural geom geometric form, which we can construct right out of these because it's built right into the geometry in there. But I'll do a, some post on that eventually. So here we go, I've added onto the octahedron, the top one, just like so. And we, I've got one more set here. I would love to be able to, I mean, I, I should, can, can build another one of these and put it all together, but then I can't take it apart again easily. I need a, a little manufacturing department for doing this. So let's see if I can get this on here without it all toppling over. All right, let's see, almost got it. Okay, there we go. So now we have the top and bottom points of the star tetrahedron. And if we did a few more around the outsides, we'd uh, six more points, we'd have a complete giant version of a star tetrahedron, which is resembling which is the same pattern as every single one of these little balls in here, okay? I haven't really seen, you know, just to give the Lovahedron here a little, a little uh, love, <laughs> literally, because I haven't seen any other form that anybody's built to construct these, that it combines like the spherical shape nature of these to, uh, you know, they mostly use the straight lines. So this is a pretty unique structure and it's allowed me to build these geometries in a way that I never thought I, you know, I could explore this way and see how they fit together. Uh, and it's, it's gonna allow us to add up all the spheres that are in here because now we've just added you know, um, four to each point, including what we already had. So let's go back, it looks cool this way too. All right, so let's go back to the screen share. This all comes toppling down. All righty. Okay, so share the screen again. And we didn't really spend much time looking at this image, so let's, let's take a look at that a little bit more in detail. I put the flower of life on there, uh, the, the fruit of life completely, so you could see, and this is where Metatron's cube would be now coming around. And in there we can create fully Metatron's cube with all the 3D structures that we would want in there. The dodecahedron, the icosahedron, we've seen the octahedron, the tetrahedron, the cube, they're all in there in Metatron's cube. So I just remember, because there's so much going on on the screen, it looks like a swirl of color and it, it should, but neat, amazingly, because of that color scheme of the blue and the red, the yin yang symbols that I showed you way back at the beginning, we've got all the red coming up on the top hemisphere of this mostly, and most of the blue all towards the bottom. Now remember, this is, you would really be looking down at this from the top, kind of vortexing around spinning because all those spirals have the, the peak at the top and the bottom here. So, and if you get in, let's, uh, you know, if you got in really close here, you can really kind of see all the little yellow lines in here because that underlying geometrical structure of those six tetrahedrons that came together, the little seeds of life in each of those, they're all interwoven in there. You know, if we zoomed into this, it'd be like you're walking through this kind of structural matrix. And uh, at the very end, maybe I'll come back and do it just in case I run into some issue doing it. 
so let's just get back to our numbers because this is what I was working on before I started this video was checking out how these numbers were working up. And this was kind of my question in getting to this is like, how many total are we going to have? Well, we just added 32 more um, to make each of the stars off the sides with uh, the four more for each of these little points. So we just added 32, which gives us a total of 65. Okay, and we have the one in the center, which was kind of like the building block foundation for both of the two forms that are in here. And I had to make a branching split, but they're both together all the time. And that, that one in the middle is kind of like, um, it's like number nine, let's just say, you know, it's like that invisible one point that's there everywhere and it's not there at all. You've got eight directions with the Merkaba shape. Um, so we'll use the Lovahedron version. You got eight little points off here. Each one of these is in eight direction. And then you've got the one at the center, which we often don't include, but we always have a center point, but we have eight around. So if we didn't, you know, like we usually do, if we don't include the center in the totals, and I'll do this just for this illustrative point, is we'll come up to 64 spheres around that center sphere which is like the, the Tao or something at the center, right? It's that, that universal center, the one in the middle. And all, everything else is coming off of that 60, that first one, the 64 that come off of that. To me, this is a really exciting discovery because I didn't really know going into this how many spheres I'd actually get. And it, it, amazingly, and it just fits beautifully into all the uh, I Ching analysis I've been doing because now each, one of these spheres here is a hexagram. You know, it's two of these, you know, joining together like this at that small scale. And each one of these little things is one line. And we can color combo these in all the 64 ways. And I have all the, all the mathematics. I'll just do a quick show of this crazy looking diagram of what this looks like. This is all geometric structure, the whole I Ching mapped out right here. Uh, so let's take off the flower of life so you can get a full on view of the fruit of life image. Delete, let's see if it does it. It's not, uh, just a little aside here, like constructing this image was very slow because the computer didn't really respond. Like it starts spinning, like every little move you make because there's so much information. I mean, that's jam packed. It has to think way harder than I do to do, do what it's doing. So uh, here it is. You can almost see this spherically now, right? This is the very top point. And there's a line of these going down along the sides. These are at the bottom. I mean, these are at the top. This is a top upper triangle that's cutting through the bottom triangle. All right. So that's like the spherical, the spherical view of a star tetrahedron. It isn't constructed out of straight lines. It's constructed out of the spheres. And we have 384. If we took the 64 and inside each of these little balls, remember there's 64 plus 61 at the center, 64 of these little ones, and they're made up of six tetrahedron, uh, six star tetrahedrons in there. The six times 64 is 384. That's how many lines there are in the I Ching. So I have to play around with that a little bit more. It's kind of a new discovery for me, but. I think I've just been able to take all the I Ching and put it into this huge holographic uh, matrix of the fruit of life. All right, let's check it out. And now the other one I have here is 64 times eight, because within each of these little spheres here is also um, just a regular star tetrahedron, you know, just a regular eight pointed star. And 512, you'll find out here in a moment, is also a very significant number. And we're getting really close. Last slide here to wrap everything up is 
512, okay? That is, um, when we start off following this geometric pattern here, here's the egg and the sperm entering. And as the egg divides into two polarities inside itself, splits into two, it has a positive and negative charge in the cell division, just like this image. You know, here it is, plus minus, right over top of one another. And as that you've, you know, goes through its cellular growth, it goes into the tetrahedron, it goes into eight, and then it goes into 16, then it goes into 32, 64, you know, it keeps on going and replicating all the way up to 512 cell divisions. And we have within the fruit of life that I just showed you, 512 little star tetrahedrons in there. Now there's one at the center of each of those, but if we're, in, you know, we're not including that little center one and just sticking with the six outer ones, which actually when they fuse together, they'll make up the middle one on its own. It's made up from the six on the outside and it's also there by itself. So that's why it's kind of this one that's like number nine. But when you bring them all together, six on outside and add it up times eight, you've got uh, the six, eight star tetrahedrons made up in there, you've got 512, uh, 512 little star tetrahedrons mixed in that whole um, previous image that I showed you. To me, that's just phenomenal because at that point of 512 contained within the fruit of life, when you hit 512 cell divisions, something fabulous happens. Fantastic uh, movement of energy starts to occur within a torus field is started to generate right at 512. Turns into a shape that's a sphere. And as soon as it gets to the 512 mark, then all of a sudden there's an opening that happens at the top and the bottom, a little central channel that goes right through. And that's you. <laughs> this is your cell division. When you were just the conception, the little tiny cells dividing in, off of those first little two cell, one cell, and branching off into the eight that are still down at the base of the perineum at your root. When that just started to flower and bloom out, when you got the 512 cells, you were a little torus field, very small, but that means that that same pattern is still replicating at all these larger scales. So every little cell in your body is having this torus field effect, having this torus field. That's why it's a smoothie universe from atoms to galaxies. It's all like that. So here's an image of the, uh, I think it's a mouse embryo going through that transition, starting off, getting bigger and bigger. Here's the little hole opening up at the top or the bottom or whatever it is in the image. And then there's that torus energy of what it looks like. It's essentially like an apple, right? An apple is like a torus, you know, it's got the bottom, the little divot in the top and the bottom and the energy that's kind of circulating up and around every fruit is like that. Well, no surprise, the fruit of life, I mean, we're, we're talking about the fruit of life and having that same type of energy flow. So I know I covered a lot of ground, a lot of bases. Um, it's a, maybe it's one to go back and look at certain parts because I went with the images first and then work through a lot of uh, the geometry of how it all fits together. I'll end it again here with seeing Buddha with the, the double torus here and all the I Ching directions around it with all the numbers that are associated with that. I don't think I would have probably gotten this far visually uh, and, and being able to visualize this and seeing these patterns without those number sequences uh, that have huge significance to this and how they'll fit in to the later sharings when I start to really tie it into the each specific hexagram within the I Ching. And, uh, you know, without playing around with this and being able to see these three dimensionally, um, you know, I wouldn't be able to visualize all this. And like I said at the beginning of this, this brings it all to life. You know, this is life. You know, it's light, life, love, all three of those, that universal energy of what we are. So I, um, I really appreciate all those that have been checking out the earlier video. And uh, I'm looking forward to continuing to share more.
probably won't be a little bit because they just put out two big videos, but I'm gonna break some of this down in the blog posts a little bit more and share some of the images that I've been putting in just those posts and put on Facebook. And you can use these um, images if you're really attracted to any of them, to sit and meditate on them. You know, the one that I really liked in this one was with the ones with the little lines. Blow that one up and just spend some time and you'll see uh, a beautiful pattern starting to emerge there before you. So, you know, thank you again, you know, from the heart, this has been really a joy of mine to share all this. And uh, I'm thankful that there are people out there like all you great souls who are interested in this. And uh, I'm just gonna keep going and, and bring more of this light and awareness of these uh, sacred forms and what they mean to us at the deeper levels of our consciousness and what they're going to and have always been and are really coming to the forefront of how they're expanding and how they're gonna reshape our understanding of all our relationships around us from the cosmological to the smallest uh, insect. You know, it's all connected, we're all connected. There's no separation between anyone and anything regardless of any, uh, any external appearance you know, none of it. So we really can open up our hearts when we get into this. And this is really what this is about. It's that little tiny space within each and every single one of these. And this is one thing I love about this form. And it's why I called it the love hedron because it's like a hollow casing, you know, that has this little empty space. And I made a little tiny one of these that fit inside this. And it's like that little still spot. It's the empty space that's surrounded and connects all these other line, linear shapes together. It's the space in betweens. And that's the third way, you know, it's the, this balance between that sphere and the straight lines and the spiral and the empty space. So, you know, that, that's, uh, it's a beautiful life that we're all sharing together. And I look forward to all the unique discoveries so blessings and uh, till next time, have a great rest of the uh, rest of the day.